Well, hello. On this hot evening, I wanted to talk to you about a Schaefer snorkel. This is part two of the video I did last week with the Schaefer Imperial, where I demonstrated the touchdown filler. So this week, I'm not going to talk so much about the touchdown filler. This week, I'm going to talk about the snorkel. If videos like this interest you, where I talk about fountain pens, both new and old, and at all price points, I would invite you to subscribe. And hey, have you seen anything more complicated than this? Um, I, I, this is probably the most complicated filling mechanism I have run into, with the most moving parts. And it kind of shows you why some people like those... Uh, Converters. I like converters because they're easy to clean and if the converter goes bad, I just pitch it and get a new one. Uh, whereas if I've got a problem with, like with this, oh baby. So these pens came out uh, 1951 to 1959, about that era. Um, of course, they were competing, first of all, with the Parker 51 with its very sleek, unique look. Um, hooded nib on that on the Parker 51 this did not have that so they competed with filling mechanism now at the same time they're also competing with ball points which are starting to come out and ball points have this neat feature where the, the filling isn't very messy at all like you don't need a ink cloth to wipe up the pen afterwards you just you know if, if it, I think back then most of them were refillable you just pop out the old refill you pop in a new one Easy peasy. Or you throw the whole pen away, as in the case of the Big Crystal. So, Schaefer had to find... Schaefer looked at a way to make a pen that could be filled cleanly and neatly. And this was the result. So, let's take a look at it. So, this is the Schaefer Snorkel. Mine, I'll get this out of the way, comes with somebody's initials. So, BWF, I've got your pen. And then here... We've got W.A. Schaefer Pen Company, Fort Madison, Iowa, United States, made in the USA. And then here on the cap, same kind of deal, made in the USA, Schaefer's. And if you'll notice, a little bit of design here. That's part of what helped me place what the pen actually is. So this is a Schaefer Clipper. has a polished paint, stainless steel cap with vertical lines, at least that's how I'm interpreting it. A uh, little bit of texture down at this end on the finial. Nothing here except a white dot. Screw cap. If you remember last week that was just a pull cap, so this or a push cap, so this is a little bit fancier. Uh, textured grip section for a you know easy easier gripping. And it's a Schaefer Main USA. The nib, I can't read that little bit of writing there. I apologize. I have not noticed that until I saw that in the camera there. So hopefully I can figure out what that says. And then around the back side, we have an F4, which I do know what that means. That This is saying that it's a fine nib and it's a palladium silver nib. And of course, it's a triumph nib, which is a conical nib. Goes all the way around and Yes, the thing that makes it a snorkel. So we'll come back to that. Now this pen, I'm not going to take apart. So if you want to see how a pneumatic filler actually works, you can look at my video from last week about the Schaefer Imperial. But, watch what happens. Because I can't replay this when I do the end montage. See that? It extends a, a little snorkel. Then I pull this out, and it's a pneumatic filler. So, I happen to have, thanks to a generous viewer, some vintage Schaefer script number two red. So I'll draw this out. Draw this out. Insert into the ink, just the snorkel. Notice nothing else is getting dirty here, just the snorkel. And I may have gotten above the surface a little bit there, but we'll live. 
and I reel it back in and we're done. Now one of the things I'm interested in this week is that upturn nib it's supposed to give me two different line widths so I am really looking forward to finding out if that is the case. All right so one limitation I see usually you don't see me write the pen name I'm gonna to have to let the feed saturate just like I'm using a converter or something that's interesting I had forgotten about that shook the pen a little drop of ink came out probably through the snorkel but uh, yeah I totally forgot that was a thing with this type of pen uh, I haven't used it in a while. Um, I keep waiting, thinking, well, next time I fill it up, I'm going to run the review. And then I saw, and then I didn't do the research, didn't have the research done, so I thought, well, I'll get to it later. And uh, here I am. School's about to start, so I thought, I better get that review filmed. While we wait for the feed to saturate, I just thought I'd show you this vintage ad I found. It's a 1976 May National Geographic. So the white dot means respected quality and all that. And then the other side is an article about a blue crab. There we go. Now we're cooking. So the, uh, the ink is Schaefer Scrip. I'm going to add the word vintage. Very faded red and almost a little bit of blue character to it. So Schaefer Vintage Scrip Red Number Two uh, Flex. No, they were there were some sold with Flex. You'll see an X after the F for those with Flex. This is not one of them. Apparently, this conical shape is supposed to make it a little t stronger, and this upturned nib, so when you're pressing down to write on carbon paper, yeah, because they would have been doing carbon paper back then, it doesn't rip the top layer of the paper. I'd say my experience right now is smooth. Uh, I'm not a particular fan of this ribbed grip, but it, you know, the pen itself is actually a nice one to write with, if you can get past that. Uh, wetness and flow. I think it's keeping up very well. The smear test. Not bad. Uh, reverse writing, which I'm actually curious for once to see how this test turns out. You know, oops, you didn't see that. About as smooth as I would have expected for an extra fine, which means not very, but not scratchy. Uh, and let's do a longer form quote. Since this is a U.S. made pen, it seems an Appropriate quote. All right, and we'll do the world famous Pierre Gustafson test. All 
All right, so once I got it writing, which admittedly took a while, so I'll have to go back through the video because it's all, you know, it's on a timer on the camera. Uh, once I know that, I'll, I'll write down how long it actually took because I'm going to edit it out. I, I took a trip downstairs to get the advertisement, went and got a glass of water. So, you know, if you use cartridge converter pens, you're putting in a cartridge. Sometimes it takes a while for the ink to get there. That's what happened. Uh, one more test I always like to do. Slips right in. All right, so this, the, first of all, this pen is a, with this nib on it, is a daily writer pen. This is not one of your exciting, oh my God, I love it type of pens. Uh, th this is one you pick up to be your everyday companion and you do all your daily writing with. Uh, we're not showing off an ink. We're not doing anything amazing. And I think it does very well with that. What I'm curious about, this is one of the most complex fountain pens that was ever released. I mean, first of all, we have the pneumatic filler, but then we also have the snorkel. So we've got all these moving parts. So what that does is it drives the price up. And remember, this pen was trying to compete with not only the successful Parker 51, but the ballpoints that were coming out. I mean, the big selling point there is you just stick your snorkel, like a snorkel on a submarine, into the water, or I'm sorry, into the ink, and uh, draw it up, and you don't have to wipe it off or anything. Well, you still have your issues of you have to occasionally clean the pen. Uh, you, you still have, I mean, it's got to be expensive compared to the ballpoints. Uh, I'm honestly surprised that Schaefer stuck with it for as long as they did. I don't know. I never found any research that suggested, but I, I wonder what it would cost to make a pen like this today. Uh, I certainly don't see anybody engineering something like that because, again, just too many moving parts. And then if something, my fear, one of the reasons I don't use this pen often is what happens if it, if it breaks? Do I have the skill to fix it? Uh, right now, there are people around with the skill to fix them, but how much longer will that be? You know, I, it makes me nervous. This pen makes me nervous. That said, it's a very cool little piece of history. So I am glad I have an example in my collection. And yes, you will see me write with it occasionally. And now that the pressure's off of you got to film a review, I can finally relax and just fill it when I feel like filling it. <laughs> So, if videos like this interest you, where I talk about fountain pens both new and old and at all price points, I would invite you to subscribe. And hey, what do you think of this complex filling mechanism? Can you think of one more complex? And perhaps you have an idea. How did this compete with ballpoints back then? Um, were people interested in this instead of a ballpoint back then? And maybe somebody out there has an idea about the cost if Schaefer well, probably not Schaefer, but if somebody <laughs> wanted to try and release a filling mechanism like this today, what it would cost. So let us know down in the comments. So I want to thank you for watching. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.